fear is an assumption that you are about to experience in the future through your senses or imagination, real or imagined. More drawbacks and benefits, more negatives and positives, more pains and pleasures, more disadvantages and advantages, more losses and gains, more challenges and opportunities from somebody or yourself or some environment. So it's an assumption of a one-sided uh, pull of more drawbacks and benefits that's about to occur. And it initiates inside our brain and nervous system an autonomic response of fight or flight generally, or in extreme cases, maybe freeze. But it will make us either, if we think we can defend it and fight against whatever this fear is, we'll, we'll shackle it. If we think we can't, we'll withdraw from it or we'll freeze. But it's a perception, an assumption that there's going to be more drawbacks and benefits. And I'd like to make a statement about that. I don't know if this is one of your questions, but studying fear, there's, there's a number of basic sources of it. But there's two primary ones. And because of our animal nature and our subcortical brain responses that are still within us, like in the animals in the food chain below us, we seek prey for food and we avoid predator because we could be eaten. So the perception of loss of that which we seek, which is food, uh, the perception of loss of that, um, which is starvation, is a fear. And the perception of gain of that which we're trying to avoid, which is being eaten, is a fear. So there's two primary fears that all fears, every fear in our life, all revolve around two forms. The fear of loss of that which we seek and the fear of gain of that which we're trying to avoid. Now, anything that we seek is something that supports our values. Food is something that supports our values. It's anabolic. <clears throat> anything that challenges our values, we try to avoid. Our animal nature wants to avoid predator and seek prey. Therefore, it wants to avoid pain, seek pleasure. It's a hedonistic construct. So anything that we perceive that supports what we value, uh, anything that allows us to survive as a mortal surviving creature that we feel the loss of can become frightening. Anything that could stop us from surviving, so attacking us, challenging us, the fear of gaining of that will do that. Now, there are seven areas of life that we can categorize life into, although many thought leaders have done different categories. I use seven. That's our spiritual quest, our desire for uh, living an inspired mission, our mental quest, our desire to wake up our innovation, creativity, and genius and be intelligent, our business quest to be able to contribute a service to people and generate income as a business our financial quest to be able to build financial independence, our family quest to be able to have love and intimacy and family and partnership, our social quest for social influence and power, making a difference, and our physical quest for physical well-being, beauty, and um, you might say uh, attractiveness and vitality. In the process of doing that, all those seven areas, all because we have a mission to fulfill those, anything that helps us fulfill that, that supports that objective, that we lose, it's going to be frightening. Any of those things that can challenge that, that we could gain, that could challenge that, gain the, the, the challenges that, that could threaten those, we can have fear of. So the coronavirus could be a challenge to us in business could be a challenge to us in finance. It could be a challenge to us physically. It's now in some degree isolative in the sense of challenging us socially. And it could affect, because we're such close quarters and we're not possibly used to that, could cause challenges in the relationship. And um, we can start losing 
if we have a delusionary faith that somehow the supernatural force is supposed to protect us from that, we could have a, a loss of what we have a belief system about our spiritual quest. So we can, as a result of this scenario, because of our perceptions, add to the idea of fear associated with all those. It all boils down to, to how are we perceive things though. Because our fear is a perception, an assumption, a perception, an assumption we're about to perceive more drawbacks and benefits. And that's the key that we have in our capacity to change our perception. Now we've had situations in our life that we thought were terrible and we assumed the worst and they didn't turn out to be what we thought. I'm, I'm pretty sure that most people who's listening who are listening have had moments where they've had assumptions and they were frightened about something that didn't turn out to be the case. And we have what is called false positives, assuming something's there, then it's not. So many of the, the, the fears are false. False evidence appearing real, F-E-A-R, some people call it. And some may be real, some may be more threatening. But fear is an assumption that we're about to experience in the future through our real senses or imagination, most imagined, more drawbacks and benefits, more losses and gains. But I wanted to develop it, that into those areas to see that there's a lot of different aspects of the fear. But they boil down to two. The perception of loss of that which we seek, the perception of gain of that which we try to avoid in any of those seven areas of life. So it really is looking like there's 14 variations in those seven areas. Um, the loss of something we want in those areas or the, the perception of gain of that which we don't want in those areas. All of those can initiate fear and compound and superimpose on top of each other and escalate and become associated over time and become anxious driven. So it's all our perception. We have the one thing about a human being is we have self reflection and we have self governance and the capacity to change our perceptions. Uh, some animals are, are by, learn by trial and error and they're living by impulses and instincts, but we also have the capacity with our intuition to alter the ratios of our perceptions and change things. Anaxagoras, 2,600 and something years ago, um, said that pain and pleasure, phobia and philia are a result of lopsided perceptions. And it's still accurate today, even though 2,006 years is 600 years have passed by. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining me.